Jane Massey coming forward. Looking for Hoven in the box. Schlingerman came and didn't get it. And there was a header towards goal from Stephen O'Donnell, who arrived late from his midfield position. Good chance, that. And here's Ryan Brennan. O'Brien trying to give him an option, and he's put it into a good position there, Brennan. O'Brien. Cross from Ryan Brennan, half blocked by Massey, who will get there first, O'Connor does for Drogheda United. He's taken down by Darren Neenan, and it's the, it's a red card, can you believe it? 26th minute, and that tackle by Darren Neenan on Paul O'Connor has led to a really important moment in this cup tie. He is in late, he does go underneath the player that knocks him up in the air, Anthony Budimer feels that under the circumstances that was a red card it's hard to disagree with the referee and yet I feel for that young man there there was no intent on his part Rain just debating now on the east coast as O'Brien tries to get is that a penalty yes it is Chris Shields making the tackle from behind and it's another red card can you believe it Dundalk down to nine men a penalty to draw to United and in the space of four minutes, this game has changed utterly. Surely draw it on the way to a cup final. The question here, did he get a touch of the ball? We'll see it here again. There's the touch of the ball. From this angle, anyway, it looks like he got a touch. Peter Cherry will want to stop this one, would feel that it's necessary that he stops this to keep his team in the FAI Cup. Well, has it ever happened before? Two red cards in the space of four minutes in a semi-final, and Gavin Brennan puts Drogheda United in front, and it's their fans that are singing in Hunky Dory's Park now. Perhaps the Claret and Blue are on the way to the Aviva Stadium. Nick Cook, it might be his last game in charge, but he could be about to bring his side to a third cup final this season. Curtis Byrne making a run for him. That's a good ball over the top by Gartland. But Byrne is all alone here, and Prendergast for company, and about four other Dorada players there as well, and it's going to be a corner. Mm. The uh, assistant on the far side, Dermot Broughton, has given the corner kick to Dundalk, so that'll give them a little bit of time to catch their breath. Dundalk have all of their eight outfield players in the Dorada United half for this corner. The big men have gone forward, Gartland and Boyle, and Sullivan too, who's trying to make a nuisance of himself in the six-yard box. And there is Sullivan, and his shot, his header goes towards goal, and Schlingerman didn't do too well, and it's behind for another corner. That could have been the equaliser. Great header by Sullivan. They've really got to sort themselves out, Trotter, and, and make sure they use the extra man. Who would bet against the dog coming up with a dramatic equaliser late in the game? Cassidy on the front foot, coming forward and finding Gavin Brennan, who's got some space here on the left. The shot towards goal. Did it touch the goalkeeper? It just went over. And, uh, well, Brennan thought it was touched over by Peter Cherry, but the referee thought otherwise. It's a goal kick. I think it began with the wrong decision by Brennan here. Take that defender on. He's good enough to go past him. Take him on. If you can go past him, then there's the second goal, and the game is over. Hines finds Dave Cassidy, nice feet by him, up step John Mountney, good play, and Massey to Mulvena, who's got some space to run into here, and Dundalk are bursting forward, and it's O'Donnell and Tal, and here comes Mulvena, can he finish it off here? Great save, brilliant diving save by Michael Schlingerman, the first time he's had to do that in the second half, a wonderful run by Chin and Mulvena, and Dundalk almost on terms. An absolutely brilliant individual run by Mulvena, the way he gets at the full-back, the last defender takes him on, he's into the box, and it is a terrific save by the goalkeeper. Corner comes in from Tal, cleared away by Cassidy at the near post. Here's the chance perhaps for Drogheda to break because Dundalk had pushed everybody forward. O'Brien nicely on to Ryan Brennan. Mountain is the last defender. Boyle and Gartner trying to get back. Here's Shane Grimes goes for goal and it's handled. Brilliant save over his own crossbar by Peter Cherry with a very strong left hand. Shane Grimes the left back almost putting this beyond reach. Another brilliant save. Well, we can see this great play, a breakaway from the dog, from Drada against the dog, hit the target. That's a brilliant save. We're in the final few seconds of normal time. We're waiting to see how many minutes added there will be. In comes the throw in. Byrne gets it away. O'Donnell goes into the back of Ryan Brennan. And now here's the chance for Drada to break. Peter Hines. Gavin Brennan stayed on side. He's in. His own half in receipt of the pass. Chance here for Drogheda United. Brennan misses the target. 
terrible effort that by Gavin Brennan who was clean through although John Mountain had run about 80 yards to get back and try and cover extraordinary stuff at United Park we'll probably finish this match with a free kick in the corner of a game that will live long in the memory yes. but maybe not for the right reasons well Drogheda United are celebrating but it's Dundalk who can take the plaudits their players are shattered what a performance by Stephen Kenny's nine men final score Drogheda United won Dundalk nil an amazing feeling uh, to think you know people kept looking at our league form but I knew in the, in the games that we played in the league we've 13 draws and I felt most of them we should have won but I don't know why we got 13 draws if we did I'd be burning to Barcelona but today's about getting a result unfortunately the way it came uh, to Dundalk having two players sent off but I don't make them decisions but certainly we'll enjoy tonight for what it is How can you convince players to put in effort like that? You're talking about every hour of every day living your life in a certain way for when the occasion comes then to to be the best you can be and then just for absolute uh, um, farce you know for absolute farce to descend on the place um, you know it just it's, 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 a, it's a shameful day for a referee in Ireland Yes well to say that Stephen Kenny was perplexed after that game would be the understatement of the season but where do you start? First of all, I suppose we will, will send our congratulations to Drogheda United through to another cup final. And I'm sure all the Drogheda fans will be delighted that this one is at the Aviva and not at Tala Stadium. Uh, but uh, first of all, Liam, let's put a cup semi-final in context. Uh, you guys have both had the pleasure of appearing. You're almost to the final, so it's almost more nerve-wracking than the final itself, is it? It is. It's, it's a really easy affair. You know, you're going out, you don't want to get beat because you know you're going to miss out on a really important day. And... Uh, your adrenaline is pumping from two hours before the match, you know, because you're up thinking about it. And then when you go out, you're trying to control your emotions and stuff like that when you're playing. But, you know, sometimes it, uh, it boils over, you know, and things happen. And as we see me Darren Meenan's tackle, I think that's one of them occasions where the occasion has got the better of him. Yes, Stewie, you're within touch and distance of what is now recognised as the biggest day out in, in, in Irish football. And needless to say, it's going to be tense between the players and it's going to be tense for the referee as well isn't it? It is yeah I think there's a, a knack to semi-finals cup semi-finals um, I've played in four or five and beaten in four and can honestly say never really played well in, in, in or played up to our potential in, in semi-finals and we just didn't have that knack of getting into the final and um, you know it's on the day a lot can happen I mean, we've seen him from the, the two games on the weekend a lot can happen you know in terms of the referee a little bit of luck it's how you react to certain good situations bad situations and um as it's turned out, you know, Drogheda maybe got a little bit of luck went their way, but they, they capitalised on it and they, you know, they, they max, maximised the opportunities that they got. And there's always going to be, you know, it's going to be a winner, it's going to be a loser. And unfortunately, that's, that's, that's the cup competitions for you. Yeah, the, the smallest of incidents can influence the, uh, the outcome of a game, Liam, but also the biggest of incidents. So we have to look at the two most significant ones in the game. First of all, the Darren Meenan red card. What was your opinion on this? I don't think there's any complaint, to be honest, Peter. I think uh, Darren Meenan, the, the, the ball's come across right at pitch. He's, he's never getting it. O'Connor's getting the ball straight away, but... He's going to the ground, he's two feet off the ground. Like, you know, he's, I think Paul O'Connor sees him coming here, and I think when he does see him coming, it could have been a nasty injury. But I don't think the referee's left with any choice there because, you know, as I say, the letter of a lot, if you leave the ground now, or, or if you intend to, to, to make a challenge like that, you're going to get sent off. And I think uh, even Darren Meaney himself knew when it happened that he was in trouble. Yeah, I mean, you are risking it, Stewie, aren't you, if you come in with a two footed challenge in that area of the pitch? Yeah, I think I think what he's kind of come straight at him. It's hard to defend him. That's the thing. We're we're kind of looking for excuses to say he shouldn't have been sent off. Yeah. But I have to agree with Liam. I, I think it's it's more on the side of sending him off. I think it's it's dangerous. It's a little bit high, um, and it's just unfortunate from 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 Dundalk's point of view. And so the reason uh, the referee Anthony Buttermer has come in for so much critis criticism subsequently wasn't really for that decision. It yeah. was more for this, the decision that followed it almost immediately. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is this is to me now. This is not a sending off. I can see why he's given a penalty. He's come in behind him. Declan Fabio O'Brien's done really well to get him front. Shields has found himself on the wrong side. To be fair to him, he makes an honest attempt to play the ball. He doesn't go to ground. He does actually win the ball, but he takes the player down. In my opinion, that's a penalty, but it is not a sending off. Yeah. There's cover, Andy Boyle's on the cover. And you can see there, Finney Pert, perplexed by the whole thing, with Stephen Kenny as well. And uh, Gavin Brennan dispatches the penalty. But I think from Dundalk's point of view, 
and the reason why you know Stephen was so berated after the game, they never had a chance. You know, you can you can live with ten men. You know, you can even live with ten men going down one nil. You have an opportunity to kind of rally your players, get back into the game, but they never had an opportunity once they went down to nine men. Yeah, Liam, uh, I suppose I'm asking you in a way to, le to read the referee's mind, but do you think Anthony Buttermer's opinion of that particular incident there was a goal scoring opportunity was denied? Well, possibly, Peter, but you know, the thing about it was, there's, there's, as Stuart said, there's, there's covering players, you know, it's not they say that he's straight on a goal and yeah. the keeper's out yes, of the keeper. Or you know, he still has yeah. a bit of work to do, he still has to get it on. It's, just, it's a bit like the Tiernan of Vienna, uh, chance we're going to see, like, you know, where he's gone through and he's tried to had it. Like, Fabio had a, still had a bit of work to do, but I think he's just so he's so quick to bring out the red card. And I think in that situation, even if he had went these lines, man, I said, was there cover there? Was there a clear chance? You know, but straight away, he just pulled it out. And it totally destroyed the semi-final, you know, because there was no way back for Dundalk after that. Although, full credit to them, they did try everything. And down to nine men, it was always going to well, be difficult. Well, but there, there was the odd chance. Well, they, 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 Stephen obviously said them at half-time, we're going to have to try and just contain them here for long periods of the second half. And with 10 minutes to go, he does really well. He's... He runs past two or three players and instead of just probably trying to have it low and hard, he's, he's going for height. And, but you can see him here, like, you know what, this, this was with nine men and the Dundalk players, look, there's four or five players trying to get up and support him. At this stage, I match after playing with nine men for, for so long. It's great credit that they still were managing to, to make a game of it, you know, because after the, the two cent loss, he just thought it was going to be a, a cricket score, like, you know. Yeah, it certainly was a remarkable performance. The fact that they, they kept it 2-1-0, is Dewey. Why do you think, by the way, briefly, why Drogheda couldn't capitalise on playing against nine? Uh, sometimes it can be difficult, you know, you, you kind of, you, mentally it can, it, can, it can play on your mind, you know, you've got, you've, the opposition's gone down to nine men, you've scored, you can tend to kind of fall into this sort of uh, false sense of security that you're true. Yeah. And um, that might have played on their, on their minds. And, you know, as well as that, Dundalk would have made it very difficult for, Dr for Drogheda. Like you said, they, they really worked right to the... Right to the end, they worked their socks off and made it difficult for Drogheda. And I think, you know, I think we need to give credit to Dundalk for that, that point of view. Absolutely. Well, after all the high drama in Drogheda,